Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 21st day of November. It is Monday, and today's topic is titled, The Last Adam. Amen. And before we get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he, too, can be your Lord and Savior today if you'll just humble yourself and believe on him and realize that it's not by anything that we can do. It's all by Jesus finished work on the cross and what he did on the cross and dying for our sin and buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. And if you just uh, repent from what you're trusting in, believing in, and turn to Jesus and he will uh, gladly receive you. Amen. All right. So praise the Lord. So we're going to sing uh, today's scripture song first, which is from John 5:24. So press play here and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Here we go. John five twenty four. Verily, verily, verily I, I say unto you, you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. This is Jesus speaking. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, hath everlasting life, not come into condemnation and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life but is passed from death from death unto life Amen. Praise the Lord. So, all right. So, we'll put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic, titled The Last Adam, for this 21st day of November, Monday. And the passage is from 1 Corinthians 15.45. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Amen. That's talking about Jesus. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.45 And today's author is R.G. That would be the initials for... I believe that's Rick Gravely. And he is the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Rossville, Georgia. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of the last Adam speaking to Jesus. So, he writes here, When Adam sinned in the garden, his body, soul, and spirit were immediately affected. His spirit died immediately, his soul died progressively, and his body died eventually. When he sinned, his spirit was defiled, the light went out in his soul, and his mind became darkened. Finally, the life went out of his body, and he began to die. Uh, yes, Adam was a living soul, but as a living soul, his sinful deed plunged every other living soul into depravity, darkness, and death. But praise the Lord that uh, God spared him, and uh, he wasn't allowed back in the garden, but he uh, uh, put these coats of skin on Adam and Eve, amen, and told them they had to go and uh, multiply and replenish the earth and all that, so amen. But, uh, so, um... All right, continuing on, it says, uh, However, there is another Adam. Jesus Christ was not the second Adam, for that would imply the possibility of a third, fourth, and even more. Christ is the last Adam. Amen. The glorious news is that, uh, as, that as sinners, we, are, or we were desperate in our spirit. So uh, the glorious news is that as sinners, we were desperate in our spirit darkened in our mind, and dying in our bodies. But when we met the last Adam, 
we immediately became justified in our spirit, sanctified in our soul, and one day will be glorified in our body. Amen. And so, um, this kind of would be like a, maybe a continuation of yesterday's uh, looking for that blessed hope. And one day, Jesus will call us up and we'll get our new glorified bodies. Amen. And be with him in heavenly places for all eternity. Praise the Lord. And uh, so, praise God for that. Looking forward to that day. All right. So, where was I at? Okay. So... Um, continuing on, it says, uh, when we trusted the last Adam, he became the Lord in our spirit, uh, bringing the light back into our soul and the promise of a glorified life in our body at the rapture of the living and the dead. Amen. But he doesn't want us to just wait till we get rapture to live for him. He wants us to live for him right now and, and, uh, and be Christ-like every day. And not live after the flesh, but live after the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, gentleness, meekness, uh, faith, temperance, and the uh, like uh, such. And Brother J James is going through all those uh, right now in the series on Galatians. So check those out. Amen. He's also got a book uh, titled Fruit of the Spirit. And that's available on www jim uh, dot james w knox dot org amen so you can go to the um bookstore web store there and order that a uh, good book there and uh will help you to not live after the flesh but after the spirit if you're so desiring to do so amen all right so now it's time to get into the boots on the ground topic for today and this is um the one for today is november 21st and Today's topic is titled, A Faithful Copy. And again, this is from the Boots on the Ground, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier by Randy Wells. And uh, this takes place again on November 24th, or 21st, 1864. And the passage is Deuteronomy 17:18, And it shall pass, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites, Deuteronomy seventeen eighteen. All right, so let's get into the topic here. Uh, the author writes here: the Gold Star Mothers Organization was initially started for mothers who had lost a son or daughter in World War II. Yet long before the Gold Star Mothers, one mother received a written personal condolence from the president himself. On 21st November, 1864, President Abraham Lincoln is reported to have composed a letter to Mrs. Lydia Bixby. The Bixby letter, as it became known, expressed the President's sympathy on the loss of Mrs. Bixby's sons during the American Civil War. A copy of the letter was then published in the Boston Evening Transcript newspaper four days later. Even popular culture grabbed the letter. In the 1998 war epic Saving Private Ryan, General George C. Marshall's character recites the letter to two of his staff officers, quoting the letter verbatim. Hmm. Among historians, there is debate over the authorship of this letter. There are some who suggest that the letter may not have been penned by Lincoln himself, but by his secretary. John uh, Hay, as no one has produced the original displaying um, his handwriting, uh, in actuality, the fact that the original has not been produced is no great obstacle to authenticity since the newspapers published it so quickly after it was written. Most people recognize the sheer volume of reproductions that have agreed over the years as a strong testament to the legitimacy of the letter a similar debate yeah similar debate also or excuse me although with far greater consequences exists over the preservation of the bible since there are no original manuscripts still in existence for the most uh, for this most sacred book what people fail to realize is that god promised to preserve his word and that's psalm 12 6-7 Matthew twenty four thirty five and Isaiah forty verse eight are the references. Uh, to do so, he used human instruments 
to make faithful copies of his word. And those copies are no less the word of God than uh, if we possessed the original manuscripts. The Lord promised to preserve his word through every generation, and we can certainly trust that he has done so. And that's the King James Bible, the word of God. Amen. So, praise the Lord for all those men that uh, God used to uh, put the King James Bible together. All right, so that is the end of the topic uh, for the boots on the ground. And now it's time to get into today's hymn. And put that there. Oops, a second. All right, so today's hymn is titled, How Precious is the Book Divine? And this is hymn 199. And it's the Trustworthiness of the Scriptures, a spiritual song written by John Fawcett, who lived in from 1740 to 1817. And then it's from the National Psalmist, 1848. Amen. All right. So uh, there are six stanzas here. I'm going to play the instrumental um, sampling here and see if it's easy to sing along with. If not, I'll just read you the stanzas after this is done playing. So here we go. Give it a try, it sounds easy enough. <clears throat> <clears throat> How precious is the book divine by inspiration given, bright as a lamp, its doctrine shine to guide our souls to heaven. Amen. It's light descending from above our gloomy world to cheer. Displays a Savior's boundless love and brings His glories near. Hallelujah. All right. It shows to man his wandering ways And where his feet have trod And brings to view the matchless grace Of a forgiving God When once it penetrates the mind, it conquers every sin. Then light and soul begins to find the path of peace divine. <clears throat> It sweetly cheers our drooping hearts In this dark veil of tears Life, light, and joy it still imparts And quells our rising fears Amen This lamp through all the tedious night of life shall guide our way till we behold the clearer light of an eternal day. Praise the Lord. All right, well, that's the hymn. And now let me read you the story down here at the bottom of the page. All right, so it says here. Upon his conversion, Fawcett made himself useful to the church, 
and soon the question of preaching the gospel came before him. His diary reflects his struggle. O oh Lord, I know not what to do, but my eyes are upon thee. If in thy wise counsel thou hast fixed upon me to uh, hear thy name, uh, or to bear thy name to Gentile sinners, I earnestly implore that thou wouldest give me a right spirit and bestow upon me every needful qualification for that most difficult and important work. If thou dost not call me to do it, O Father, not my will, but thine be done. <laughs> and uh, we could take heed of that. It's not our will, but the Father's will be done. God Almighty's will be done, so amen. All right, so that was the um, story down there. And uh, praise the Lord. Now I'll go ahead and give you the references. So stanza one, we have Second Timothy 3.16. And Proverbs 4 2. Stanza 2 is Psalm 119 130. And Titus 3 4. Stanza 3, we have Proverbs 6 23. And um, Daniel 9 9. And then stanza 4, we have Psalm 119 9. And Romans 15 4. Stanza 5 is Psalm 19 8. And Jeremiah 15 16. And then stanza 6 is Psalm 119 105. And Second Peter one nineteen, Amen. All right, so that'll be it for today's hymn. And put that aside, and I'll go ahead and sing the scripture songs for today. Amen. All right, so we'll do yesterday's, and then conclude with today's. So yesterday the twentieth, John three thirty six. <clears throat> John three thirty six. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Right. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting, everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting, everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, and the wrath of God abideth on him. He that Believeth on the Son hath everlasting, everlasting life. Amen. All right, now I'll conclude with today's. John five twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Again, that's Jesus speaking. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, hath everlasting life. Not come into condemnation, and shall not come into condemnation. But is passed from death, from death unto life. But is come from death, from death unto life, unto life. That's right, amen. So praise the Lord, make sure you do that today. Trust Jesus Christ, your Savior today, amen. Alright, so that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me... 
give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and the boots on the ground devotionals. So tomorrow is the 22nd already and we are flying through the rest of this month and I can't believe it's going to be uh, Thanksgiving to God Day here soon. So, all right. So tomorrow's uh, scripture song is Matthew 6.33 and then 7.7. 7. So it says here, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the spiritual kingdom. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's Baptist bread topic will be titled, uh, Time to Redig Some Wells. Hmm. So time to redig some wells in this passage here is Genesis 28, 18a. Amen. And, of course, tomorrow's uh, author will be Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So that's uh, the author for tomorrow's uh, topic. And then the Boots on the Ground devotional will be titled, uh, for tomorrow, will be titled um, Spouse, Spousal Support. And this takes place on November, November 22nd, 1744. And the passage is from Proverbs 31.10. So 31.10 about who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Hmm. So that'll be tomorrow's topic for the Baptist or the boots on the ground. And then uh, tomorrow's hymn will be hymn 200. Ah, we reached hymn 200 in the big thick uh, hymn book here. Uh, Psalms and hymns, the spiritual songs book. And this is hymn 200. And it's titled, And Is Thy Word, O God? Uh, question mark. So that's the title of it. And Is Thy Word, O God? And uh, so this will be the uh, effectiveness of the scriptures. A spiritual song. Amen. Uh, no story for this one. But uh, that will be from the um, Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And you can find that on MelodyPublications.com. It's where you can get a copy of that. And then we got the Scripture Songs book and CDs available on www.dailyscripturesongs.com, Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website, and they are missionaries to Port Kaituma. Uh, and that's uh, Sister Patty and Brother Dean Runyon. Amen. And uh, pray for them and all those that have uh, helped take over the work, uh, or helping with the work, I should say, over there. All right, so that's that information. And then the... Baptist Bread devotional book will be available to order online at www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books and other material on it. So if you check out that uh, website there, amen. And then finally, we got the Boots on the Ground devotional book, and this is available on the internet. So praise the Lord. Good devotionals in here where he gives a little history story and then compares it uh, um, with the uh, scripture and gives a little uh, little uh, message along with it. So, amen. All right, so that's that. Okay, so that's it for today. So, thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.